Hello YouTube, I am Duango AC, Keeper of Taskbot, and I'm here to show you Double Dragon by Alyosha. This run is all of 8 minutes and 50 seconds long. You can find this at taskvideos.org slash 3211M. This is going to be fairly straightforward. We're just going to run this in the terminal. So I'll turn this console off, hit enter, and here goes. Not much for music at the beginning of this game. Taskbot has had a major renovation since the last time a lot of you have seen him. He has new eyes, he has a lot better setup than ever before. Uh, I'm really happy with this one. But let's talk about Double Dragon. So this game has a very interesting plot. And, and here's the way they describe this one. So uh, you're just going to see a lot of punching going on. I'll just, just watch the run in the background while I describe what's happening here. Set in a post-apocalyptic New York, Double Dragon is the story of Billy and Jimmy Lee, twin brothers trained in the fighting style of Susetsu Kin. Together they manage a small martial arts training school, teaching their students in self-defense. One day, Billy's girlfriend Marion is kidnapped off the street by the Black Warriors, a savage street gang led by a man named Willie. The Black Warriors demand the Lee brothers disclose their martial arts secrets in exchange for Marion's freedom. The Lee brothers set out on a rescue mission to crush the Black Warriors and save Marion. Oh, the plot of earlier games. But you might not know this. Released on many systems, this game was so popular that they even released it for cellular phones and made a board game. Even a Hollywood movie has been made. Did not know that. Uh, this particular version was made all the way back in 2016, but it's an improvement of 7.19 seconds over the previous movie, also made by Alyosha. Uh, there's some interesting strategy changes in this particular run. Uh, one of the things I've noticed about this particular task, uh, it is very methodical. <laughs> He's Alyosha's just brutally moving through the level, picking up exactly what he wants. Uh, right there, he picked up some dynamite. Yeah, some dynamite he tossed and then picked back up. I'm not really sure the purpose of that. He didn't leave a note about that one, but I thought it was kind of interesting. But he's going to toss that down there, wait for another enemy to helplessly walk right into it, and yeah, yeah. So those kinds of things. It's a game I remember being ridiculously difficult. I didn't particularly do very good at this game when I was a kid, but I did love the suplexes. Hi, YouTube. I'm glad you were here. <laughs> it's okay. He can be Biffy Lee. It's better than Bimmy. <laughs> I caught that. <laughs> so you can see my chat there below me. Uh, there's always some fun going on. If you want to swing by uh, twitch.tv slash DuangoAC, you too can join in the mad madness that happens when I record these. Uh, I don't know if you get to suplex a train, but it would be fun to see it. Okay, so, knife, pick up, throw, leave, <laughs> repeat. That's Double Dragon 6? You get to suplex a train in Double Dragon 6, huh? Okay. <laughs> Alright. <laughs> One of the other interesting things is, when Alyosha made this, there was an additional discovery found that uh, added, an up excuse me, added another 105 frame improvement. So, it's kind of interesting seeing how that all played out. Alyosha's comment says, It's finally done. This was easily the hardest task I have ever worked on. I'm happy to finally have it on the workbench. Despite being only a small improvement in frame count over Phil's run, the previous uh, task author, this task is completely different. I used a new experience right where I lost frames early on to gain enough experience for the powerful elbow attack to use earlier in level 4, which is coming up shortly. Saving enough frames overall to make it an improvement. It took me many restarts and failed attempts before I settled on this route. Dave DFWM's whips were also scrapped since I couldn't get enough experience later on to make the early savings meaningful. So there was a lot of various testing that went into this one. Overall, I am very pleased with this run despite being under nine minutes long. It challenged me every step of the way until everything came together at the very end. I think the strategy used here is optimal overall, although it can probably be done slightly better if RNG and enemy behavior is carefully reverse engineered and analyzed. Special thanks to Dave, DFWM, for time-saving suggestions and previous whips. So, some context. This particular task has, uh, let me get this straight, a re-record count of 45,487, but the frame count is only 31,869. So there are more re-records than frames. That's not uncommon in games this, this difficult. 
Also, this guy really loves the knee to the nose, clear your sinuses approach. <laughs> okay, just pick that dynamite up and then drop it and pick it up. I'm not really sure what the purpose of that is, but it seems to be working for him. I would love to know more about what, what the strategy is for that. Also, no fall damage, I've noticed. Uh, one of the things I have to admire about Double Dragon on the NES is there are a lot of shortcuts taken just because of the limitations of the system, but there's a lot of really advanced graphics for the NES. Uh, I'm not really sure why the entire background flashes the way it does, but when you get to scenes like this, you can see just a ton of extra detail that's everywhere. Multiple colors, multiple different um, dithering techniques. I have to give the designers credit. This is a pretty good looking game. Yeah, I guess you can use dynamite as a thrown weapon. Just chuck it at their head, I guess. Also, apparently you can't drop off of there. Okay, so mission four. This is apparently where the time savings from the previous tasks start to add up. <laughs> right there, you get pushed but not knocked off. Yeah, if I was getting doomed by dynamite, I'd play dead too. Yes, that's a very astute observation. <laughs> so Alyosha doesn't comment on it, but here in a bit, it looks like uh, there's an intentional death right there. I think? I'm not really sure what's going on there, but I assume it's because it's faster than scrolling. This game does scroll really, really slowly. And I think he's deliberately knocking them off to save, uh, save time. Presumably because waiting means you have to wait for their body, their corpses to disappear. Uh, I'd love to know more about what went into this run. The notes are unfortunately a little bit thin in this one, but that's okay. No fall damage, by the way. Yeah, let me just save time by kicking you and all of your friends at the same time. Raysama, I cannot see your name on screen at all. interesting watching the methodical nature of this. You are a CSS nightmare? Yeah, you're, a, you're just a nightmare without CSS. You're a nightmare with and without CSS. With and without you. With and without you. Admit it, you just started singing. <laughs> Raysom is mostly a nightmare to CSS rather than a nightmare himself. <laughs> so this appears to be the final, final guy. I think this is Billy, uh, and Billy is really taking it just to the wrong part. I just, I wouldn't want to get kicked there repeatedly in the exact same spot over and over again. <laughs> well, as we're wrapping up this run. Uh, Thank you so much for tuning in. You can find more Tool Assistant Speedruns here on YouTube. I'll be posting more in the coming months. Also have tas.bot as our main website. You can come to discord.tas.bot or discord.gg slash tasbot to come join the Discord community. Thank you so much for watching. Enjoy. <laughs>